the word in us coming alive because someone preached that word to us and then it has come alive in us and through us on us and in us the word has come alive and then it's always working always working the word is always working even when it doesn't it's all it doesn't seem like it it's always moving working because it's living the word has been made alive so pastor you're not going to preach today you're not preaching today I know he's now see the other bad thing is he's probably chomping at the bit you know, he's chomping at the bit because the atmosphere is set. He's probably ready to take off. But I know he'll be obedient. Yeah, so we are going to give the word, um, but it's going to come through the ministers here. And, and that is going to be a beautiful thing because what you'll see is a replication of pastor through the people here. And then, Pastor, we're going to speak on the Word made alive. Yes, the Word made alive. You know, it's, you, you, some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of us came from um, some other churches. And I'm not by any means talking about any church, but maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't, wasn't alive. It was, it was, it was kind of dead to, but once you once you find out that the Bible, the Word, can be used, and it's not just talking about the disciples, and it's not just talking about the prophets, but those things are in the Bible so that it can be used for us. Once you find that out, and then you begin to use it, then it changes everything. Am I right, folks? It changes everything. So, so that is what we have learned. And Pastor Steve is going to come and he's going to give the word. And as the Holy Spirit put it on his heart to give on um, the word made alive. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know. Thank you, Deborah, for your obedience and, and, and the worship team. That song, uh, me and my wife, we were praying the other night. And you know I'm no singer, but I broke out in that song because, you know, we're going through some stuff right now. And, 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 and sometimes, you know, you can't be moved by what you see. And you can't be moved by what you're feeling, but you got to be moved by the Word of God and, what, and the Word of God alone. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Let me get set up here. Hang on. I only got 10 pages today. And, oh, look at this. It won't, it won't stay. See, I knew I should have uncurled that earlier. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I really don't have anything written down, really. These are just some side notes of reference that the Lord, when, I, when Pastor Dennis sent me the text message, and I was like, okay, all right. And, uh, the Lord said to me, just, just listen to me. And, and, and so I'm just going to go by what the Holy Spirit was telling me. But I do have a scripture I want to start with. And that's in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 through 27. We're going to read. And uh, just before I get started, Pastor, I love you both. You guys are awesome. And... Uh, my wife and I are so grateful for this. Not just you guys. I mean, this whole church family has been a blessing to me. You have no idea how much it's been a blessing to us. When we came to you, we were broken. We were hurt. And, 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 and you gave me a clear path. 
whatever you want to do. And, and uh, I'm so grateful. And, and no, I'm not mad about you using my name this morning three or four times. That's all right. <laughs> That's okay. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you guys and, and, and just... And just, you know, let's, let's, let's fill up the bus, like you said. We're going to have no empty seats. Amen? Hallelujah. That's what I love about this place. Amen. Praise God. So 1 Corinthians. I think my glasses is off. Here we go. Don't, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs? That's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing here. We're running. We're running, man. We're running the race. But only one person gets the prize, so run to win. Amen? Amen. Amen. All athletes are disciplined in their training. That word disciplined means to punish or correct with love. Wow, how different from what the world thinks. See, that's why you got to know how to study the Bible. When you see key words like that, sometimes, you know, you're... English vernacular just picks it up and says, oh, that's bad. You know, punishment is bad. And punishment is, is, is not bad. And it's, not, it's a good thing in the Bible because it's correction. And God corrects those whom he loves. Amen? So if you felt like you've been corrected a little too much by the Lord, hey, don't take it personal. The Lord is saying he's telling you how much he loves you. He is. He is. That's the word. The word made alive. Amen. Discipline in their training. They, uh, all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. So now he's making a comparison between how the world works and then how we work. So what the world runs after is a dead-end street. There's no prize for them. Amen. So, so he says, hey, so they do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. Wow, that's exciting. You got to run with purpose. And that's what pastor teaches us. Run with purpose. Get it done. Let's get it done. You know, he's concerned about us. He, he loves us. And so we have to have that purpose, that same purpose that he has and the way he teaches us is the way we have to act with the people that we, in, in de, who, who we engage outside these, these walls. Hallelujah. I'm not just shadow boxing. Who is that guy? Muhammad Ali. <laughs> you know, I used to love watching him box, man. It was a work of art, that guy. Oh, my word. So, you know, he's not just shadow boxing. In other words... I'm going to give you the Stephen Pereira translation to that. You're not just, you're not wasting your time. You're not wasting your time. Preparation time is never wasted time. Amen. Amen. So the things that we do here, we do on purpose, for a purpose. Right? I discipline my body. Again, that word discipline. No, I discipline my body. I have to correct the flesh. I got to keep this thing under. Because this thing wants to say stupid stuff sometimes. It does. It sure does. My wife reminds me every time. <laughs> She's so good. She could yeah, 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 I brought you in. I threw you under the bus. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So, you know... When Pastor Dennis sent the note, he talked about 30 years of ministry. And, you know, unfortunately, I wasn't here for the 30 years of ministry. So uh, I only know the four years that we've been here or whatever it's been, three years. So, but the word made alive could not be made possible without pastor's obedience, his discipline to the voice of the Lord, your God. And I like what it says. He says, I run the race. We're running a race, man. This is a relay race. This is not a this is not a 50-yard dash. God is doing something here, church. Now God gave me something specific and I don't know how this is going to work. Pastor, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know. But I'm going to run with it. And so what I want to do is 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 I need I need Nicolo. 
Nikolai, I'm sorry. I, you know why I say Nikolo? Because my grandson's name's Nikolo. And it's so close. Go stand in the corner over there by Pastor Dennis, please. And then I need Pastor Dennis down up in here, brother. You we're going to get to next. And then I need uh, Amani. Amani, come out here right to the front. Well, actually, stay right there where you're at in that aisle. Is Curtis Jr. here? He's not here. Curtis Sr., take Curtis Jr.'s place. Come up here, please. We're going to do a little, little analogy here. The word made alive. Way before pastor was born, there were diligent men of God who brought the gospel out. And they passed the baton. So pastor, stand up for a minute. Grab that baton. Now you're going to move with me. We're not going to run fast, OK? We're just going to do a little slow motion. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Father, Thank you for pastor. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you that uh, the 30 years has been a blessing, but there's more. There's more. God wants you to know there's a lot more. And the time is coming, yeah, where you're going to pass that baton to the man. And Dennis, you can go sit there now. Now, now wait. Take this position like this. Go like this. Praise God. The Lord said this to me. He said, he said, this is you just now when you're in that position that you've given it all. That after the end of the race, the runner, he's catching his breath. And you ran a good race, brother. And the Lord wants you to know that, that he loves you and, and that there's more. And we appreciate you. Amen. And we love you. You can sit down. Oh, oh, play the tune. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah, we got a tune. <laughs> so we got to go. Yeah. Whoa. Yes. And God wants you to know, brother. He wants you to know that you've been disciplined. And he wants you to know that you, he wants you to be ready because when you grab that baton, things are going to be different. You know that, right? You know that. And, and, and you got a job to do. And don't, don't waver. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be things that are going to try to stop you and slow you down. But the Lord says, don't, don't focus on that. You sidestep it. Ha! And go forward and hand it off you're going to take the same position. You're going to say, oh, I did my all. I gave my all. I laid it all out before you, Lord, and I pass it on to this next generation. This is supposed to be Curtis Jr., but he's filling in. And the Lord gave me a word for your son, Curtis, and he said this. Let's, let, let's pretend we're running here. And the Lord said this. He said, he said your quietness goes before you. And he said, you're stronger than what you think. And the Lord wants to use you in a way in your young generation of young married couples to make a difference in the world today. And so receive that and remember to always keep me first. Hallelujah. Now you see, now we're getting younger. We went from oldest to oldest. And then, Miss Amani, God gave me a word for you. The Lord sees your heart, sister. He sees your heart. And he sees those emotions. And God can use that. And don't ever, don't ever frail from it. Don't, 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 don't go away from it. The Lord wants you to continue and, and just be, be who you are. Use that emotion. Use that, 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 that zeal. That zeal that you have. And don't ever back down from an argument against the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, let's go. Let's go run. We're going to run over to Nicolo. I mean, Nikolai. I got it, Nikolai. Praise God. And she's going to do the same thing. She's going to pause. And because when you're done, 
you're done. God, know, God knows that. He knows we only have a certain amount of time. And you know that you cannot play around. You have to give it your all. So when you're done, you're done. Make sure that you give it your all. Amen, sister? Amen. Ha! Ah, Nikolai! Ha! Ah, come on. You're running. We're running, brother. We're running. Woo! Glory! And from the oldest to the one generation to the next generation. Oh, Lord. Amen. Nikolai. Nikolai, the Lord said this to me about you. The Lord told me, I have such a heart for you, young fellow. And the Lord said to me that he's going to use you. He's going to use you. He's going to use you. In the sports that you do, he's going to use you. He's going to use you as an example to other young children your age, your generation. You can change them. You can let them see the heart of the Lord that you have. Amen. 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 Praise God. Give me the baton. Glory. Glory. Woo. That's the baton. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The word made alive from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation. That's what it's about, church. That's what it's about. It's a multiplication. God is the God of addition and multiplication. He's going to add on to you. He's going to add on to you in your life personally. And he's also going to multiply it. That's the greatest thing you can ever do. The greatest thing you can ever do in your life is to replicate yourself into somebody else. Hallelujah. It's the word made alive. It's the word made alive. And, 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 and you know what? Thank God for the old men of God. Guys like Charles Spurgeon. You've heard that name, right? Charles Spurgeon was an English, particular, uh, particular Baptist preacher. Surgeon remains highly influential among Christians of various denominations. His ministry, he was called the Prince of Preachers. He was a strong figure in the Reformed Baptist tradition, defending the 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith and opposing the liberal and pragmatic theological tendencies uh, in the church of his day. Yes. Nothing has changed. Amen. We have the same battles. Amen. Who's going to stand up for it? This generation. Amen. This generation. Amen. Charles F. Parham. Oh, my. American preacher evangelist. In 1929. He passed away. And together with William J. Seymour Parham was one of two central figures in the development and early spread of the American Pentecostalism. Pentagon, I can't pronounce that. It was, it was Parham who associated the phenomena of the Word of God with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody took the Word, took the time out to read the Word and find out how to use it, how to apply it. Praise God. Then one of my favorites was the Azuzu Street Revival. You've heard about that. It was a historic series of revival meetings that took place in Los Angeles, California. It was led by William J. Seymour, African-American preacher. The revival began on April 9, 1906 and continued until roughly 1915. They fell to the ground. Speaking in tongues, what is this? And you spread. Revival is right around the corner, church. We, it starts with you. It starts with you. If you're not revived in your heart, you can't, you can't minister to somebody else. You got to have that revival spirit in your heart. Praise God. Then came John, John Holstein was an American pastor and founding pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Everyone talks about his son, Joel, but his son, Joel, can't hold a stick to John Olstein. The father was an awesome man of God. I cut my teeth on John Olstein videos when I got saved. The man was a phenomenal preaching man. And see, and the work made alive there in Lakewood Church. 
And then the mantle gets passed again. The baton keeps moving. The baton keeps moving. We can't let it stay on the ground. If there's a church that's doing that today, shame on them. Shame on them. The baton is on the ground. And all they care about is a dollar that they can put in their pocket. And how many airplanes they can fly. The baton's on the ground. They got to pick up that baton and keep moving. Then came a man, a man after my heart, Kenneth E. Hagan. Brother Kenneth E. Hagan, prophet, man of God, who came. This is the word made alive. God spoke to him, pulled him out of his sick bed, paralyzed with a heart disease. Destined to die, the doctors would go in the office and look at him in the bed and look at him and just shake their heads. But thank God he found the word. Oh, Oh, pastor, he found the word. He turned the pages. Oh, what healing is mine? 1 Peter 2.24 says I was healed already. What am I doing laying on this bed? Ha, 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 ha. Ah, he cut his ministry on, on Mark eleven twenty three twenty four. 24. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say the confessional faith, the use of faith, going from the Logos word to the Rhema word. You say to that mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. I have no choice but to listen to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And be thou removed, and thy cast of the sea. It shall no, no doubt, no doubt in your heart. Woo! Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass, and he shall have what? So ever he saith. That's the power of the word of God. What God wants to do is so exciting. It's so exciting. It's so daring. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what are you going to do with the anointing, church? Pastor has the anointing. He's wearing the coat. He's got the coat. He's got the anointing on. What are you going to do with it? Woo! Are you going to, are you going to use it for profit gain? Are you going to use it to line your pockets? Or are you going to use it to bless other people? To love others. Show people how to love other people. So that they can see God working through us. And in us. And for us. Hallelujah. The church is the the answer. This church is the answer. This could be the place. Where the next revival breaks out. When I started ministry pastor. I had that in my heart. I had that in my heart. That's why I went into ministry. And we prayed and we pastored for six, uh, six years or so. And let me tell you, that still hasn't left me. The Lord said to me, he said, there's revival coming. There's revival coming here on the East Coast, right here, right here on the East Coast. Amen. So the word became alive because of the faithfulness of men like Pastor Owen. And all these great names that, I, and, and other people came out of that. You know, we have people like Dr. Fred Price, who established Crenshaw Christian Center, and then Kenneth Copeland rose up out of it, and then Creflo Dollar, and then more and more, and they multiplied, and they passed the baton, and they passed the baton. Let's keep passing the baton, church. Hallelujah, we have a great pastor who knows how to pass the baton. Let us get on the same page with him. Amen. Hey, hey. Well, you know what? Before I get started, I just want to like piggyback off of what when he started talking about all the greats, you know, old man Hagen and Dr. Price, because, um, you know, that's who Pastor was connected with, 
we got to see firsthand. We went to Tulsa and sat under Hagen, and, and we went to California and sat under Dr. Frederick Casey Price. And we were a part of FIC with them, that organization, which is now the fellowship that's headed by Dr. Michael Freeman down in Maryland. So yes, he is, he is a part of all those greats. And the baton was passed, hallelujah, and came right here to Lakehurst, New Jersey, to our man of God. <clears throat> Glory to God. We are so thankful for you, Pastor. So thankful for you and the word made alive in you. And, and First Lady, we just love you. The big smile and the big hug. <clears throat> <laughs> he couldn't have done it without you by his side. We know that God chose you. There's no coincidences in the things of God. You were chosen. You were his rose. And he needed you to, to carry forth all that God <clears throat> has given him to do. I won't be long. Um, Jeremiah 3.15 in the New King James and I will give you shepherds according to my heart. This is God speaking. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So this is a story about obedience. This is a story about obedience. Um, I believe now, now I've heard so many stories we all have through the years from pastor but I believe an encounter with God happened. There was this young man who was hungry for God, hungry, and knew that there was more than what he was experiencing. And so he went to his father, like, I could just see this, you know, I could just see pastor, young pastor, you know, going to the father. And just, Lord, I'm hungry for you. I know there's something more, Lord, that you have for me. And I believe God said this, which is found in Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. He said, my son. You know you heard him say, my son. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. And I believe that Pastor did just what he said. Because he's obedient. This is a story of obedience. And so God did, ex Pastor did exactly what God said, and he gave attention to the word. He inclined his ear to the sayings. He would not let it depart from his eyes. He kept it in his heart. And he discovered something. He discovered that, as God says, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. That's John 6, 63. And what he learned was, it was the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. And it was then that the word became alive in Owen L. Austin. The word is alive. It's living because the word is Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. So if we go to John 1, one through five, it tells us that in the beginning was the word, and the word was, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it. It goes on in 14 and says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of 
the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Then I believe Pastor had another encounter with God. And he told him, go oh, tell my people what you've learned. That my word is all they need because my word is life. My word is alive. And then he told you to make it alive for them. Make it real and tangible. Not something so far off, but, but easy to grasp and to learn and to live by. And then a vision was birthed. A vision. And when you see this vision... Not only do you see Harmony Ministries USA Incorporated, you see the word made alive because he wanted to make sure it was branded on everything he did because that's what God told him to do. Remember, this is a story of obedience, of obedience. And so over 30 years later, lives are still being changed because this man of God was obedient he doesn't like when we do this because he's such a humble man. But pastor, this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to honor you. Lives have been changed. My life was forever changed when I walked into your classroom at Monmouth Bible Institute in September of 1995. And I was pregnant with Chelsea. I was pregnant with Chelsea. She'll be 27 this in November. And I just got to tell you a little quick, little funny story. So, so I, I started class in September with him. We were seniors at Monmouth Bible Institute. And um, I, I started the class and I gave birth in November. You know, yeah. And so when I came back to class, you know, I, I didn't have my homework done. And when it was time to turn it in, I went to him and said, you know, I had a baby. And he did. You know, that looked at his go. I was like, well, I, I, I just got out of the hospital a couple of weeks ago. He just looked at me like that. I said to Mike later, I guess I was supposed to be reading in the Bible. I mean, in the, in the hospital. Yes. <laughs> like, but guess what? I didn't know that back then. You know what I'm saying? Come on. I wasn't a member of Harmony at that time. I, had, I went to the hospital. I went early. Too. I went to the hospital, and then I came home, and then I went back to the hospital. I didn't open the Bible. I didn't open the Bible. Well, why would I be doing my homework? I just had a baby. And I'll never forget his face. <laughs> like, so? You had a baby? So? Well, what about the word? What about your assignment? I, you know, that just stuck with me. That just stuck with me. I was like, wow. So every time you speak, Pastor, you illuminate the word. You make the word alive. Then he took it a little further. And he reminds us that our words, the words that we speak, have power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So he tells us we should speak the word, that we should go out and make the word alive to others. And that's what we've been called to do. See, it's not by chance that you're here. It's not by chance. See, God knew we needed this man of God. And everyone who is here and a part of this ministry, God knew. So that should make you feel so loved. So loved. That God had already planned for us to be here on this day. Serving this man of God. He is the under shepherd, our shepherd of this church. And he illuminates the word and he changes lives. So many. I know personally, I don't know where I would be had I not met you 
September of 1995. At the end of that year, we decided that we were going to uh, visit churches of um, the pastors that we had at MBI. And Harmony was our first stop. It was the first Sunday in June of 1996. And we joined that day. We joined that day. And I can tell you that I am so thankful and so grateful for this man and woman of God that I know that my son would not be here had it not been for them. He would not be here worshiping and honoring the Lord because I was taught that the word was all I need and that I'm to feed on it and to live by it and to believe it that all I have is Jesus and he is the word. It's a choice. It's a decision. And they walk it out in front of us. It's not just here preaching on Sunday. It's living it. And your life will be forever changed. And listen, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what you go through because this world is fading. But Jesus is alive. Word is alive. And our hope is in him. And our home is in heaven. And no matter what you experience here, rest in knowing Jesus is Lord. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is the light. He is our life. He is our hope. And all we have to do is feast on this word. That's the word made alive. This obedient man is walking out the vision the Lord gave him. And we are eternally grateful. <laughs> Colossians 3, 16, one of my favorite. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Pastor, thank you. Thank you. For making the word alive. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. You guys have made it, you guys made it easy. I'll just I'll just stand on your shoulders. This is the word made alive. If you will, what you see um, in me is a replication of pastor um, standing on the word, listening to the word. Because it was in those times growing up when I heard those great men, as pastor was listening to them in the car, I heard Dr. Frederick Casey Price. I heard Kenneth Hagen. I heard Kenneth Copeland. I heard them. They were in my ears. And I heard them. And then I began to grow up, and then I began to listen to them on my own as pastor guided me to have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. And so a different, well, a different little perspective is that word that word, when it becomes alive in you, it changes you, it transforms you. And here we are now in 2022, having the word been preached to us, 
The word is powerful. The, we've learned that the word is powerful. We learned that the word transforms. And we learned that the word conquers. That we can take the word and we can take the word and conquer. Conquer the darkness. Conquer the enemy. That is what we have learned. And that, how, that is how the word has been made alive in us and through us. I just want to look at a couple things really quick. If you go to Romans uh, Chapter 1, verse 16, New Living Translation. And I was just thinking about, what, this, is what, this is what Pastor has done for us, right? He has taught us through making this word made alive that we are not ashamed of this good news about Christ. We found out something. We found out that it is the power of God at work. We found out that this word is always working. We, we, we found out that this word is our is our life source. That's what we found out. And we found out that this word is powerful and that we need this to we need this to transform ourselves. We need this to transform our lives. We need this we need this word to conquer. We need this word to transform. But the bottom line is we found out through a man that this word is vital. This word is vital to us sustaining and living a good life. We found out that the good news the good news that we hear is that this thing is full of power. That's the good news that we found. And that we found out this good news, it goes inside of us. This good news goes inside of us and then it becomes one with us. And then it's, it's, it is the word, God, breathing all over his word and God becoming one with, with this man. What he always wanted to happen, he allowed us to walk through that door and become one with himself. Mm. that he allowed us to get rooted and grounded in this word so that when, when, when something comes up, when this trial comes up, when opposition comes up, that we're so rooted and grounded in the word that we can now regurgitate the word all over the opposition. So now, Sister Brenda sent me, I was listening to a, a, a minister she sent me, and this minister was talking about the answer. Answer it. Answer the opposition. Answer it with, answer it with your words. Answer it, answer it with the word of God. Answer it. We've been taught the word. Now, we've been taught that it, it's alive and it's living and it's powerful so that we know how to answer every single thing that comes against us. We know how to answer it through God's word. It is beyond going to church. It's beyond walking through these doors. Every time we come through these doors, I'm looking for a nugget that's going to help me survive, help me live, help me to overcome. I changed that. I don't look to survive. I'm beyond survival. I look to overcome. I, I look to live at a place that I haven't lived before. Then the, then the word begins to get inside of you, and then the word changes how you talk. The word changes how you think. The word changes your vision. And then you, can be, you begin to see things that are not even there. Because now you call things as be not as though they were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now the word becomes creative power for you. you. Now it's just not words you're reading off the Bible. Now the words are so far in you and it's so full of God and so full of power. Now you begin to spill out and call things that be not as though they were. What do you mean? I then I talk about my life and what I want. I talk about how I shall increase more and more. I talk about how I shall have the peace of God. I talk about how I should have the joy of God. Well, what happened? The word of God got in me, and it allows me to now speak out this powerful word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. And just like we're singing that song, he never stops working. The word never stops working. Once the word of God comes out of man's mouth, that word never stops. It never stops working. It never stops. I don't care what you feel, how you think, what you think, what you see, but that word never stops. In Psalms 119.89, can you bring that up, please? Look at this. Go to the New King James Version. 119.89. For, forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled. In heaven, the word. No, no, I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to tell you something different. 
Remember that prayer that was in that Bible? Let your will be done on he in heaven as it is in earth. Let your will be done, Lord. Let your will be done. Why is that, why is that prayer there? Because that's the will of God, that, that the heaven pour out on earth. That's the will of God, that heaven is poured. Well, how is it going to get there? Are we going to climb to heaven and reach with our hands? No. How do we get heaven on earth? Through our mouth. Don't do the word of God. Every time a man believes in the word of God and it spills out of his mouth, then that's bringing heaven on earth. And it's not a demon in hell that can step the light of God, the power of the God, the glory of God. There's not, there's not a demon in hell. That's the word of God made alive in me. I believe the word. I believe it. I, I believe the word and I do not doubt. I believe the word is designed to overcome things that we face in this world. I believe that I'm an overcomer because I'm born of God. I believe the word. This is what we have. The word is the life of God, the goodness of God, the glory of God. Wrapped in here. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. This is all God breathes. Well, how do you get from not believing to believing? Well, how do you get from dry to wet? Well, you can jump in the water. You maybe get in the shower. What, so, what, so what am I saying to you? You're not trying to make the water be water. All you do is get in the shower and you get wet. Because the water does its work because that's the property of water is to, is to penetrate and then you'll get wet. Amen. So the, what I'm telling you is the property of the word is all you got to do is put the word in you and the word will do whatever it is it's supposed to do. I can't fail, Derek. It's, I can, it's impossible for me to fail because I'm so full of the word of God. I'm so full of it. I'm so full of life. It's impossible for me to fail. Now, everybody, anybody else can believe whatever they want. They can, believe, they can read the self-help books on how to be successful. But I'm telling you, when you put life in, life comes out. Yes. That's what we've been taught. Yes. And watch this, Chelsea. The more you put in, the more you believe it. The more you put in here, the more you believe it. The more you put in, the more you see. Okay, let me talk to circumstances. Because some of you have been going through some stuff for a very long time, right? Been just going through stuff, right? So we, we, we hear the word, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, right? We've heard life and death and the power of the tongue, right? Now, here's what we have to watch. Sometimes you can speak out of your mental astute. And it is not out of your spirit. It's out of your mental place. So sometimes when, you are, when you're going through circumstances and you're just repeating scriptures, you're repeating it out of the mental process of knowing what to do. But what you have to do, you have to dig in and you have to dig in and get in the word and seek the word and allow God to be on you and in you and through you so that when you speak, there is the life of God is being breathed on it. It has nothing to do with whether, you, whether you're trying to make it happen. It is God himself, you now breathing it on your situation, and whew, nothing can stop it. Amen. Well, how do I know? How can I get there? It's not, a pro it's not a process that you dictate. It's not a process that you control. It is the word being the word. It is you getting into a place where you are in the spirit and not in your mind. Yeah. Well, how do you get in the spirit? Well, the one thing you can do is, well, you start got to start praising God and get into a place where you're connecting to the spirit of God. Amen. Well, how do I get to the place of just singing scripture and not going to the spirit? Well, the first thing you do is praise God. Amen. You get on your knees, right? Because now you're out of your flesh. And now I'm worshiping God. Father, I praise you and I worship you. Amen. And I glorify your holy name. God, I glorify you and I praise you. I lift up your holy name. Now it's not about Dennis. Now it's about something that's bigger than me. I'm worshiping you, Father, and I glorify you. Now I'm connected to my spirit. Now, 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 now I stay there. Imani, sometimes you got to stay there long enough to pass over the flesh. Because sometimes when you're trying to worship, right, and, and there's no music and you're just worshiping out of your mouth, 
You got to pass over the flesh. You got to pass over the flesh. And then you got to allow, you got to let the thing, you got to let yourself go. And then you got to let yourself enter the spiritual realm. And then when you enter the spiritual realm, now you can begin to speak with a power that you were not speaking just a minute ago because you were in the flesh. Come on. Shambro so then you begin, you, begin to, you begin to talk and you begin to praise God and worship him because you might be going through some stuff and your mind is heavy, filled with stuff and you, you're aching and you're hurting. So now what you do, you go, instead of trying to just deal with it, now you begin to now say and get in the spirit, Father, I need you and I worship you and I glorify you. Now you see you're winning and you don't even know you're winning because, because what happened, to see the circumstances try to talk to you, you know that, right? But you have to answer it with the word. And if you don't know what to say, you get yourself into a spiritual place so that the Spirit will answer on your behalf. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God forevermore. Because sometimes you don't know what to say or how to say it or when to say it. But you get in the Spirit, folks. You get in the Spirit. And then the Spirit will take over and the Spirit will speak for you. Sometimes, you know, sometimes those spirits of loneliness and depression, they try to deal with you and act like they're big. And sometimes you got to get in moments of praise and worship. Father God, I praise you and I worship you and I glorify your holy name. I'm talking about when no one's around. No one, no one, no one hears you. No one's around. Amen. It's just you and God. Amen. Just you and God. And then let God, then what happened is the temperature comes up because, yeah, because you're gone in God's presence. And then, and then the Holy Spirit will tell you, oh, no, I am an overcomer. Oh, yeah, I am an overcomer. I am. See, now watch this. When opposition is knocking on your mind, you attack it with the word. Amen. A specific word, a specific word, a specific word. Like, like if sickness is bombarding your mind, you say specific in the word. No, God has sent his word and he has healed me. Amen. Specific word. Amen. You know, no, a spirit of depression is on you. And all you want to do is lay around. No, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Amen. No. Because that's the power of God. That's the power of God. The Bible is very clear. The Bible does not stutter. It does not stutter. It's very clear. That, that darkness cannot comprehend the light, period, in the discussion. It was said eons ago, and it is now. The word of God is settled in heaven. And there's certain things that God can't do for you. He's waiting for you to do yourself. He has handed you and given you an authority. And he says, oh, Jamie, take this authority and you use it. The word will move you. Here's, here's, here's something. The word will move you past what you think. Because so... I'm saying this to you. Listen to me. Listen to me. Sometimes we stop because of what we think, right? If you can't get you on that, right, because now why? Thoughts bring emotions, right? We know that. Thoughts bring emotions. So he'll try to get you on what you're thinking. Oh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. This is going again. And he tries to get you to stop there and back off your faith. If you must go through, then he'll try to now from the thought, he'll get you to a feeling, right? Oh, my God. I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like it's going to work. I don't feel like... Why is this always happening to me? So now, now he's trying to get you now. The enemy will try to get you to stop at either your thought or then he'll try to get you to, the, to your feeling. But what, 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 we, what, what God needs, he can't help you there because all in you. Because he's already given you authority. Amen. You have to go in the spirit to get past those thoughts and get past those feelings. So that you have now you're using your spiritual eyes, not your natural eyes. Because when you have your spiritual eyes, it, it doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter how you feel. You just know one thing, that the word of God is true and is powerful, and that's it. Amen. Once you get to that place, the devil can't do anything at all. Amen. Come on now. Because mm -mm. what happens is... Maria, on Monday, when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're feeling like crap on Monday, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because she's holding on to something that supersedes how you feel. Do you hear me? 
You're holding on to something that supersedes how you feel. This word of the living God, this word, this word is stronger than how I feel. It's stronger than what I think. It's stronger than what I've been through. It's, I don't care if Aunt Minnie over there, I don't care. I, oh, she looks like a good saint. I don't care what happened to Aunt Minnie. I'm holding on to the word of God. I got one scripture for you, and that's the end of me go home. Praise God forevermore. This is what pastor has. See, what you, what you, what you, what you see out of me is what pastor has developed. This, this is, this is a, I'm a product of this thing. I'm a product. What you, because I'm not, I'm not like this, like all the time, like a normal day. I'm not like this. What you, what you see is the rumblings of the word. You, it's, something, it's something in me that's, do, that's getting this excitement. I'm not like this on a normal day. Courtesy is when a normal day. I'm not like this. But sometimes when the word gets fired up, when, 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 it, when it gets fired up, then, then you see an explosion. It's like Jeremiah says, it's like fire. It's like shut up in my bones. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! People need us. People need us. I've been, I meet, I've been meeting with this woman. She has, she has cancer. So I've been meeting with her. She doesn't, not, doesn't belong to this church. I've been just going over there to, over there to see her. And see, what I have to, what, what, what my job is, the Lord told me specifically what to do. Just go there and spell out the word. Change the atmosphere. So I go in there and I spell out the word. And I spell out God all over that place. And that's my job. And that's what he wants for us. To get this in here and for us to overflow like rivers of water on people. You hear God talking to you. This is what's been produced. How valuable, how valuable is it that a man and woman listen and be obedient because now they produce this. They produced you, and then you are going to go produce others, and then it doesn't die. It doesn't die. Romans 10, 17. Oh, glory to God forevermore. Amen. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's important. I wanted you to see that because faith does come by hearing. Right? That's why that's, it's so important for you to hear the word of God, for you to read the word of God, because faith comes. When, when faith comes, it's not only talking about faith, but it's also talking about revelation. Revelation will come. What, what do you mean? Okay, God will he'll open the door for you to get understanding in wisdom when you're when you're reading the word other things come with it not just faith right because his word is full of grace and it's full of truth his word is not only full of faith but it's full of his wisdom his guidance so he'll give you he'll give you wisdom in every situation that you might encounter God will give you wisdom on every situation Sometimes you have to say it before you even believe it. Because sometimes I'll just, I'll just, I'll just say, at a, at a Charles Caps, God's creative power, I, I, have, I have wisdom and spiritual understanding in all situations. I make, the, I make the right decision. See, now I'm saying that by faith. You know? but, I'm, but I'm talking to the thoughts and the noise that said I can't otherwise. So I don't just let it go without speaking to it. All right? Here we go. Last thing. John 8, 31. We know this one. John 8, 31. And Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, ye are my disciples indeed. So abiding means staying on that thing, staying on that thing, staying on that thing. Do you know what sometimes, the pastor will tell you the same thing. Do you know sometimes you, you be reading the word and you don't feel anything and just feel as dry as this is anything? Matter, matter of fact, the, the, the devil try to play to you and say, you're only doing this to get something. Wait, 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 what are you doing? He try, he'll try anything to get you off of doing something. But don't, you're not going to get excited every time you read, read the word. You're doing it because you believe it. I don't read the word because I get excited. I, I read the word because I believe it. 
Verse 32. And this is why we, why, Sister Bright, this is why. Because you said it. And you shall know the truth. Truth reigns over every fact on this earth. Truth reigns. And if I know truth, I'm free and free indeed. Sister Bright said it the best. I'm free. The devil has been disarmed. And all, all our sins are nailed to the cross. So we are free. Thank God we are free. We are free for God to move in us to make the word come alive. But there is no, you have no limits in your life. You have no limits. You have no limits in your life. There's no borders. There's nothing can stop you. Because God said it this way. Uh, the more you pursue me, the more you'll get of me. I'm saying that in, the, I'm saying that in 2022 vernacular there. But the more, the, but the more you pursue me, the more you'll get of me. There's no measure to that. There's no limit to that. What I'm saying to you, I'm, I'm saying that your life is limitless. The borders of your life is limitless. Pursue them, pursue them, pursue them, pursue them all you want. However you pursue them, that's what you're going to get. He won't deny you. If you pursue him a little, you'll get a little. If you pursue him a lot, you'll get a lot. If you pursue him extra, you'll get extra. If you pursue him abundantly, you'll get abundantly. And he is no respect to a person. If you start today, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you've been educated, uneducated, white, black, yellow, green, doesn't matter, tight, small, tall, doesn't matter. All, all have access to this. All have access to the word being alive. I just say go for it, do it, go for it, especially you young people, go for it. Seek God, seek God, seek God, seek God, seek him, seek him, seek God. Seek God. Don't allow the devil to take your joy. Don't allow him to take your joy. You seek God and watch God spill himself all over you. Amen. Seek God. Amen. Seek God. Amen. Seek God. Amen. Sometimes you got to seek him even when you don't want to, even when you're feeling dry, even when you're feeling lonely. You seek God. He's waiting there. He's waiting with his arms open wide. Amen. He's waiting for you. There's so much God has for you. There's so much he has for you. I'm talking to everyone. There's so much God has for you. But the bottom line is this. He can't do anything if you don't believe it. Don't believe it. Because truth be told, Imani, you want to hear the truth? I never, ever would have thought I'll be doing this in my life. That is the truth. But I found a love that I've never known. I found a love that I've never known. And I fall in love with Jesus. I'm falling in love with Jesus. I've fallen for him. I don't, I'm falling. I don't care what anybody. I fall in love with Jesus. So here is my. Here is my personal mission, my personal mission, that I will fulfill my purpose in Christ Jesus before I leave this earth. Amen. Amen. That is my personal confession. Amen. I say it to myself all the time, Dennis, you will fulfill your purpose yes. in Christ Jesus because nothing else matters at that point. Yes. I don't know, something about turning 50. I don't know, maybe you maybe, maybe turn, turn, turn 50. <laughs> Somebody, maybe somebody about turning 50. That's all. That's, Aaron, that's all I want. Amen. At the end of the day, Amen. that's all I want is to fulfill God's purpose. Yes. That's, that's all I want. Amen. Said and done. Yes. Amen. Please the Father. Amen. That's it. Amen. No matter what. So let's give Pastor a big round of applause, please. Wow. Praise God. Be, be, before, we're, now we're getting ready to celebrate them, but, but I, need, I need to do something. It's been it's on my spirit. There's some people that are just, just, just struggling with some stuff. I don't, uh, and 
And I, and I need you to just, you didn't heard the word, I need you to speak something out of your mouth. I need you to, I need you to speak victory. Because you don't suffer in silence. Don't suffer in silence. Don't suffer in silence. Oh, come on up, come on, come on up. I want, to, I want you to sing in the background, he knows my name. Because, because that, that's important, because God knows your name. And sometimes people feel like they're, they're alone and they're forgotten. But he doesn't forget you. Amen. And he knows what you're going through. But, but the thing about it is, he needs you to take the step. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. He needs you to take the step to him. You, you can sing it quietly. I could talk louder than you sing. <laughs> and so I, some of you just going through some things. Be mindful of what you hear. He does know your name. And just repeat over me. I believe the word of God and I do not doubt. He knows my name. I mean, there's something about that. I don't know. Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you for knowing my name. He knows my name. I am victorious in Christ Jesus. He knows my name. I am delivered from the power of darkness. My faith, my faith quenches every fiery dart of the devil. Oh, how you walk with me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is what you produce, Pastor! Oh, how you talk with me. And oh, how you tell Aaron, come here, babe, come here. Aaron, come here. Does anyone need? Does anyone need something? If you just, if you just feel like you're alone, if you feel like you're alone, just come to the altar. And let me pray over you. If you feel like you're alone, if you feel like you're alone.
Thank you so much for being a part of today's worship experience here at Harmony Church in Lakehurst, New Jersey. My name is Owen Austin, and we are located at 401 Chestnut Street right here in the city of Lakehurst. We would like so much to hear from you. Write us. Let us know. Let us, give us a testimony. 401 Chestnut Street, Lakehurst, New Jersey. God bless you. We will look to hear from you. God bless you. So long.